Odessa Orlowitz, who has Liberty Talk Canada, posted this on her Facebook wall. I think that this is entirely plausible and believable. I'm going to read it to you. It is supposedly from LPC Leaker at ProtonMail.com. Have I emailed this address to see if it's real? No, I have not. What she says is, this is a leaker from the Liberal Party of Canada. Please contact all levels of authorities and government that we know the plan. The isolation centers we already know are being built as shown on the government website RFP program. Yes, we saw that the independent MPP, Randy Hillier, had brought that before the Ontario Provincial Parliament. And there was kind of a MPs talking to each other on the other side. He thought most of them didn't even know it was happening. But the RFP was there, so... Yeah, can you have a few people guiding this thing in the way that they are talking about? Absolutely. Okay, so here's what it says. Supposedly dated Saturday, October 10th. I want to provide you with some very important information. I'm a committee member within the Liberal Party of Canada. I sit within several committee groups, but the information I am providing is originating from the Strategic Planning Committee, which is steered by the Prime Minister's office. I need to start off by saying that I'm not happy doing this, but I have to, as a Canadian, and more importantly, as a parent, who wants a better future not only for my children, but for other children as well. The other reason I'm doing this is because roughly 30% of the committee members are not pleased with the direction this will take Canada, but our opinions have been ignored, and they plan on moving toward forward toward their goals. They have also made it very clear that nothing will stop the planned outcomes. The roadmap and aim was set out by the Prime Minister's office and is as follows. Phase in secondary lockdown restrictions on a rolling basis, starting with major metropolitan areas first and expanding outward, expected by November 2020. Rush the acquisition of or construction of isolation facilities across every province and territory, expected by December 2020. Daily new cases of COVID-19 will surge beyond capacity of testing including increases in COVID-related deaths following the same growth curves. Oh yeah, you test more and then more things turn out to be called a COVID death because a COVID-positive person dies. Uh, Expected by the end of November 2020. Complete and total secondary lockdown, much stricter than the first and second rolling phase restrictions, expected by end of December 2020 to early January 2021. That would be very demoralizing. If you ever look at what Yuri Bezmenov talked about, demoralization is an important and necessary first stage before you take over and implement Marxism. Reform and expansion of the unemployment program to be transitioned into the universal basic income program, expected by quarter one of 2021. Well, that completely aligns with NDP goals, and the NDP has the balance of power, and we've already heard from the Toronto Star that the Liberals have a big a big uh, vision, a big idea that they want to implement. Projected COVID-19 mutation and or co-infection with secondary virus, referred to as COVID-21. Okay, leading to a third wave with much higher mortality rate and higher rate of infection expected by February 2021. Well, the Prime Minister of Ghana had read a document that supposedly originated with the Rockefellers, and it said that if there wasn't the right compliance, that there was going to be another pandemic, uh, and it would have a higher lethality rate. And we also know that John Paul Jackson uh, talked about this in 2012. He foresaw two pandemics. One was not but fear, and the second one would be serious. Daily new cases of COVID-21 hospitalizations and COVID-19 and COVID-21 related deaths will exceed medical care facilities capacity. Expected quarter one to quarter two, 2021. Okay, so look, our socialized medicine is already at 100% capacity. We have people in the hallways in many hospitals. So, I mean, it, it, you, could, uh, you could flick it over, have a feather land on our system and overwhelm it. Enhanced lockdown restrictions, referred to as third lockdown, will be implemented. Full travel restrictions will be imposed, including inter-province and inter-city. Expected quarter two of 2021. Hey, I can tell you in some, uh, in many major cities of the United States that there are barriers. Uh, San Francisco, for sure, that uh, they're already in place so that if martial law was ever declared, they just erect the barriers that have somehow already been 
established and they can cordon off neighborhoods, let alone cities. I mean, how many movies have we seen lately where the characters are all in a walled city? Everything, I mean, the Lego movie was one of them. The Hunger Games, okay? You know, they're all in these, this walled area. So this is an idea that's already been sown. Okay, transitioning of individuals into the Universal Basic Income Program, expected mid-quarter uh, to 2021. Projected supply chain breakdowns, inventory shortages, large economic instability, expected late quarter to 2021. Deployment of military personnel into major metropolitan areas as well as all major roadways to establish travel checkpoints. Restrict travel and movement. Provide logistical support to the area, expected by quarter 3, 2021. Along with that provided roadmap, the Strategic Planning Committee was asked to design an effective way of transitioning Canadians to meet an unprecedented economic endeavor, one that would change the face of Canada and forever alter the lives of Canadians. What we were told was that in order to offset what was essentially an economic collapse on an international scale, that the federal government was going to offer Canadians a total debt relief. This is how it works. The federal government will offer to eliminate all personal debts, mortgages, loans, credit cards, etc., which all funding will be provided to Canada by the IMF under what will become known as the World Debt Reset Program. In exchange for acceptance of this total debt forgiveness, the individual would forfeit ownership of any and all property and assets forever. Okay, so we already know from some things that Amazing Polly has put out that they want to have this. They want to have everyone, even the clothes you wear, everything is a rental. No one owns anything because private property is a barrier to elites running and controlling everything. So I find this completely believable. The individual would also have to agree to partake in the COVID-19 and COVID-21 vaccination schedule, which would provide the individual with unrestricted travel and unrestricted living, even under a full lockdown. Though through the use of photo identification referred to as Canada's health pass. Okay. <laughs> You know, it's long been speculated that when it comes to having an identification chip put into the human being, that it would store a lot of information, including your medical information and your financial information. Committee members asked who would become the owner of the forfeited property and assets in that scenario and what would happen to lenders or financial institutions. We were simply told the World Debt Reset Program will handle all of the details. Several committee members also questioned what would happen to individuals if they refused to participate in the World Debt Reset Program, or the Health Pass, or the vaccination schedule, and the answer we got was very troubling. Essentially, we were told it was our duty to make sure we came up with a plan to ensure that would never happen. We were told it was in the individual's best interest to participate. Okay, yeah, really? See, this is, this is what the elites think. They think they should be able to run everything for us and we are the sheep. When several committee members pushed relentlessly, relentlessly to get an answer, we were told that those who refused would first live under the lockdown restrictions indefinitely, basically house arrest, right? And that over a short period of time, as more Canadians transitioned into the debt forgiveness program, the ones who refused to participate would be deemed a public safety risk and would be relocated into isolation facilities. Once in those facilities, they would be given two options, participate in the debt forgiveness program and be released or stay indefinitely in the isolation facility under the classification of a serious public health risk and have all their assets seized. So as you can imagine, after hearing all of this, it turned into quite the heated discussion and escalated beyond anything I've ever witnessed before. In the end, it was implied by the PMO that the whole agenda will move forward no matter who agrees with it or not that it won't just be Canada, but in fact, all nations will have similar roadmaps and agendas that we need to take advantage of the situations before us to promote change on a grander scale for the betterment of everyone. The members who were opposed and ones who brought up key issues that would arise from such a thing were completely ignored. Our opinions and concerns were ignored. We were simply told to just do it. All I know is that I don't like it and I think it's going to place Canadians into a dark future. Well, you can count on that. You know what? I want to challenge those of you across Canada and beyond to consider what that means for you personally, to challenge your provincial and federal leaders, not just in Canada where I live, and to decide what you're going to do in this scenario. You know, Solzhenitsyn 
talked about when the people were coming into the homes of Russians under the communist regime. And he said, you know what? We were all sitting in our homes frightened, waiting for the day they would inevitably come. He says, we should have fought back. And you know what? If a lot of people fought back, the people that were coming for them, the government would have backed off because they're like, boy, we're losing a lot of our people trying to do this because people won't tolerate it. Think about what resistance looks like. This is not acceptable. This is for all the beans now. Do you understand? This election in the United States, if Trump doesn't win, there's not going to be anything. Or if they don't let him win, or if they don't let him seize power after he does win the election or, or resume power, there's so much at stake right now. It's a great time to pray, to act, to speak. And I hope that all of you will do so. Please share this.